Hello, everybody. Today we are hosting Tomasz Jentek, who is co-founder of Fornax AI. Hi, uh, happy to have you here. I'd like to ask you about your startup because you're co-founder of a really nice artificial intelligence startup. And could you please tell us more about what you do and why you've started this kind of uh, startup? What's Fornax uh, and why it exists? So I founded Fornax with my business partner, Rafał, four years ago. And here is the story why. During the studies, uh, one of our professors offered us to go to Germany to a company called ABB, their R&D uh, research center, um, for our bachelor uh, thesis. And we heard that the topic is data mining. We didn't know what it, did, what it was at that time, so we thought, okay, why not? Germany, during the studies, let's go there. Uh, so we went there and we, what we learned is how to use data to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And the problem they had is, was that they've got those huge power turbines and they've got a lot of data, how they operate, but from time to time they break down. Mm -hmm. And the cost of repairing the wind turbine is huge. So they were thinking about if we can predict when this particular wind turbine is going to fail in order to service it before. And that's how it started. So we spent there four months developing the first uh, steps of, I would say, the cornerstones for those technology there. Uh, we had a few successes and that's when I got this wow, wow moment, right? Mm -hmm. That, wow, you can just sit in front of your desk, process some data, and then you've got some results that would inf influence you know, the, your life and would solve real, real problems. <laughs> In order to do that, you need to collect huge amounts of data. How do you do that? Do you have your own data centers or you collect uh, data from all around the, I don't know, internet or uh, devices? How, how do you do that? I mean, uh, yes, you need to have data, of course, uh, uh, but it's not our part. I mean, as a Fornax, we are, uh, I call it uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science um, as a service or, or R&D team. Okay. So basically what we do, we come to the company companies that they have already data and they've got some problems and then we discuss if we can help by applying or creating uh, solutions uh, help them um, overcome the problems you know reduce the costs increase uh, increase the sales uh, but also what we do uh, sometimes uh, sometimes we enrich the data from the sources that are not available that they don't have right now we are uh, we live in the in the world in which there are a lot of additional sources of data like social media right mm -hmm. Uh, the models uh, that were created or used 10 years ago, there was no Facebook, no Twitter, LinkedIn, and that's extremely valuable source of the data, especially when uh, in the project uh, related to, to people. So we also uh, got our small robots, the crawlers that collect those data, uh, join them uh, together with the data that uh, the companies have and create even better and better better solutions. Mm -hmm. Because today uh, we are at the heart of uh, the, the corporate uh, AI startup demo day, and everybody is telling that in five years the humans will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Do you think that it will be in like, like, you know, two years or three years in your industry that it will happen so fast and so soon? I mean, it depends on the, on the application. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, if we if we talk about, uh, for example, uh, bots, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's happening, mm -hmm. right? So we need to have a lot of people that will just try to communicate with the people writing down the, yeah. on the keyboard, just mm -hmm. call them on, on the phone. So now it's happening. But there are, uh, there are fields which are not that easy. Mm -hmm. For example, medicine, mm -hmm. right? You need to prove that those solutions, that the artificial intelligence, the algorithms, are uh, correct that they may make a correct decision because it's not it's not about the money it's about the human's lives mm -hmm. right okay but your algorithm as mm -hmm. a as a fornax your yes. algorithms are 100 percent based on artificial intelligence yes. right first you program them and then are they learning by themselves or either just they are programmed by human and left to do their own job and now uh, what they do they can uh, learn themselves mm -hmm. and improve within time, mm -hmm. but to do that, they, they need a feedback. Mm -hmm. So for example, on uh, ShelfWise, the product that uh, we are uh, now offering uh, is the system that allows for uh, the shelf recognition. Mm -hmm. But the user- okay, Could you please tell us, tell us more about that? Because I've read about that and it, it, it looks so futuristic that I cannot imagine using it in the real life. Uh, okay, so uh, what's, the, what's the business case? Basically right now, the FMCG companies, uh, uh, the 
sales representative, what they do, they go to the store and they write down how our products looks on the shelf, if we've got the shelf share that we paid for, if all our products are there, was the competitor's product there, and it takes time. And to be fairly honest, that's not extremely uh, exciting work to be done, right? It takes time uh, and people are mm, usually uh, a little bit bored by doing it. So they got, they made, they made a mistake, okay, let's do it, do it, do it, and go, go home or go to next store. Uh, so what we did, we created the solution that you go just to the store, take the picture instead of writing the survey, and within seven seconds, you've got the all data, all information. About the product. About, about the product, okay. about all the products on the shelf, mm -hmm. your product, competitor's product, what the shelf share, if anything is missing. And what even uh, more important, we give recommendations. Mm -hmm. What you should do to improve, for example, if there is not enough shelf, uh, shelf share, make it bigger. If there's something out of stock, basically missing on the shelf, go to the shop manager, talk to, to him, you know, to uh, bring those products and put on the shelf. So that's what we do. And basically we uh, automate the work that helps people. For example, the case what, that we have in Philip Morris uh, in Singapore, uh, we help them and enable their representative to spend more time talking with shop managers. Because now that 15, 20 minutes, they just write down the reports. But the real value is building the relationship, relations between um, the representative and the, and the shop owner. So you're inserting the artificial intelligence of helping B2B clients optimize their work, right? So, yeah. the, so your solution is like the bridge between marketers and spenders in big shops to help to improve their, I know, market and ROI, right? Yeah, at first measure it mm -hmm. and then improve it. Mm -hmm. okay. And what's for the client? I mean, how, how the customers can, uh, can win in this, uh, in this situation? Or is it only for the B2B segment or can, you, or can clients also improve their shopping experience or this kind of experiences at malls, for example? I mean, we've got uh, uh, a lot of questions, but with uh, a little bit different case study. You, can, you know, you go to the store and it's hard sometimes to find the product that you're looking for. Yeah. So we are like the turning around, taking the pictures here, here, or a video, and it's over there, it's over there. Mm -hmm. So we, that's what we, what are, we are being asked uh, for now. Maybe, who knows, maybe in the future we will uh, make a, a, such a version. But you ask about what customers get, right? Right now, you know, in 50% of situation when there's out of stock. So you go to the store, you want to buy this one, mm -hmm. right? So if it's not there, you don't buy it. You buy a, 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 a comp competitor stuff competitors. or different stuff or a, similar stuff. Yeah, and the study says that in case of out of stock, when you expect this particular product to be in the store, you create a negative uh, impression, uh, which is connected uh, either with a brand or with a retailer. So basically you are upset because the product you wanted to buy is not there because it's a pure exposition. And the last question is the question that we're always asking, like what is the biggest challenge in your area right now, right? So I would say that this artificial intelligence is quite new. Mm -hmm. And uh, understanding by the people in the corporation, the smaller companies, by, by, by business people is a little bit different than on the, on the tech side. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an engineer. So right now I'm, I'm, I ask, act as a bridge, bridging the business and the tech guys. And sometimes the expectations doesn't match what, what's possible. Okay. So that's, I would say, the, 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 biggest, uh, the biggest challenge is here. So what people expect from you, right? You're coming to the company and saying, okay, I have artificial intelligence algorithm. And what people expect from you and from your, from your company that, I know maybe you can tell us one, one case study that you were absolutely amazed of how people think artificial intelligence works and you can deliver or you didn't? Lawyers. Okay. One lawyer came to me and asked, you know, my business model is I either charge per hour mm -hmm. or per case. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, you know, when to decide to go for a hourly rate and when per case. Mm -hmm. And that was something and like artificial intelligence can do that, can decide if it's this case or that case. Uh, if you had probably a lot of data, mm -hmm. maybe you got a chance, but you know, it's like, oh, but you know, it's, it's artificial intelligence, just give some data and you got the result, but it's not how it works, right? You need to have the data, uh, it need to be possible. Because for example, you know, if uh, the data, not even the data is the problem, sometimes what makes it unique and so solvable. Mm -hmm. For example, 
Let's say you want to distinguish whether this animal is a dog or a cat. It's impossible for artificial intelligence because it's like four legs, four, and it looks almost the same. I mean, you, when you've got the picture, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But when you don't, mm -hmm. can you think about, okay, four legs. Yeah. This, this and this one, right? Same, like, it's the same as chair. Like, yeah, yeah, and so you need more, 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 and more data. Mm -hmm. And probably if you got a DNA code, mm -hmm. it will be easy. But yeah. if you don't have a DNA code, it's still guessing, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you've got data, but you don't have the right data. So do you think that w there will be a point where which the artificial intelligence will have so much data that they can think without human touch? Um, not very soon, I would mm -hmm. say, because um, that's, I believe, is one of the biggest misunderstanding of the artificial intelligence technology in total, uh, in general, is that people are thinking about general artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that would come and solve all the problems. Like uh, the sky that will destroy yeah. the world and it will... That, that's not how yeah. it is. Okay. Right now, um, if you think about a ball, so he, this is artificial intelligence right now and you, we want to have a balloon and that's the general artificial intelligence. So it's not expanding uh, evenly. Mm -hmm. What's happening, you, we've got this ball and we are making spikes. And okay. these spikes are the narrow intelligence. So that's single problem solved. For example, if you've got a self-driving car, this technology wouldn't be couldn't be uh, applied for a boat or a plane so just right away. You need to make a system for driving cars, then f uh, uh, flying planes, um, driving boats, yeah. sailing boats. So you need all of those examples. And But when you have a, a lot of them, you can assume that you can solve all the problems. Okay, so I hope that in the next few years we'll see a good technology, but not as good as to replace humans. We'll see. Uh, I wish your startup good luck with your demo day today and thanks you thank you for short interview here. Okay, thank thanks you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks.